SOD Phase 4 is here. I'm going to teach you everything you need to know to succeed as a holy paladin in Molten Core at level 60. Or 4 Molten Core, should I say. Starting off with the stat priority that we should be using, this is what I go for here. Healing power is going to be the best stat and bang for your buck. Intellect being the one after that, MP5 for some extra mana, crit chance, and then spirit. Intellect itself is an interesting one and not as obvious to the naked eye as you may think. It actually adds 15 mana per point of intellect and slightly increases our crit. MP5 obviously is mana per 5 seconds and crit chance is obviously crit. It's no shock or surprise that most of our talent points will be going, of course, into the Holy Tree of Paladin. Starting off at the top left, we have Divine Intellect, increasing your intellect massively. We have Healing Light here, massively improving the amount that you actually heal with some of your single target heals. And then we have Illumination, another one of my favorites. After getting a critical effect from your Flash of Light or Holy Light or Holy Shock heal spells, these are three of your kind of fundamental healing spells that we're going to be going over in the rotation you get a 100% chance to gain mana equal to the base cost of the spell. So that's when you get a crit. Improved Blessing of Wisdom increases the effect of that spell, which is great for healers, etc. Divine Favor, when activated, gives your next Flash of Light, Holy Light, or Holy Shock spell a 100% critical effect chance. Then we have Lasting Judgment, increasing the duration of your Judgment of Light and Judgment of Wisdom by 30 seconds. 5 out of 5 into Holy Power, increasing the critical effect chance of your Holy Spells by 5%. And lastly, Holy Shock, a lovely single target spell, blasting them with Holy Energy, causing damage or healing an ally. Obviously, we will be usually healing an ally with it. We are going to be putting some points into Protection and Retribution because we have the space. Improved Blessing of Might is really good if you are giving this out to your party. Of course, it is one per Paladin, one giving Blessing of Might slash Wisdom, etc. So do talk and liaise with your raid leader or team on who is providing what if there is multiple paladins in the raid a few little ones to reduce mana cost of seals and benediction here uh, sorry seals and judgment here in benediction and then in the protection tree i've put improved devotion aura i do think that generally devotion aura is still going to be the one we're using the most increasing the armor bonus of devotion aura by 25 percent here with that talent making it even better and lastly, some points into toughness, increasing the armor value you get from items by 6%. Now moving on to the runes, we've got some really interesting ones I want to talk through here. Starting off on the head room, we have Fanaticism. This massively increases the crit chance with your holy spells by 18%, which is an absolute no-brainer as to why we would take it. In addition, your critical healing spells heal the target for 60% of the healed amount over 12 seconds. I mean, that is just phenomenal. Then we have Hallowed Ground, another one of my favourites. Your Consecration now also heals any allies standing in it. We are still being melee attacking as a Holy Paladin and putting down that Consecration where we're standing. If you don't know what that is, of course, maybe you're new to Paladin or still levelling, Consecration is this here. It's this talent on an 8 second cooldown. We basically put it beneath us where we're standing and it does damage to enemies. And now with this rune, it does healing to our allies as well. One thing to note, by the way, if you aren't sure on any of this or you are actually still leveling, I do have playlists available for level 25, 40 and 50 from those brackets in the phases that they were at so that you can watch those if you do need to know where you should be at certain level points. The default choice in the wrist slot will be Light's Grace. Your Holy Light spell reduces the cast time of your next Holy Light spell by 0.5 seconds. This is a great heal that we use, a little bit long, a bit powerful, and it does have a bit more of a cast time than something like Flash of Light, so it is actually going to be a fantastic way of getting that cast time down on that spell. Beacon of Light on the hand, of course, an absolute firm favourite for Paladins. The target becomes a Beacon of Light to all members of your party or raid within a 40-yard radius. Any heals you cast on party or raid members will also heal the beacon. Let's say, for example, you put Beacon of Light on the tank and then you heal some DPS people. Basically, when you heal those DPS, it will also heal that tank who has the beacon on them. Then we have Sheaf of Light. This is an interesting one and is generally an easy buff to maintain. Dealing damage with your melee weapon increases your spell damage by an amount equal to 30% of your attack power by one minute. Just be there, attacking with melee, and you're pretty much good to go with that one. 
if you really don't want to go with that one, you could go for Infusion of Light, where it increases the healing done by your Holy Shock by 50% and reduces the cooldown by six to six seconds. And your Critical Strikes of Holy Shock reset its cooldown and refund its mana cost. I know some people don't like the meleeing as a Paladin, even in Holy, which you should be doing if you want to be min-maxing or playing as optimally as you can. But this is Season of Discovery, of course, and we are changing things up a bit. So there is that option as well, should you wish to play in that style. On the leg room, there's a few different ones you can take i personally just love to go for rebuke basically it gives us an interrupt so we can help out our team you could go for inspiration exemplar your inspiring presence periodically dispels fear and sleep effects obviously it depends on the situation and the boss you're on if it's needed or not Hand of Sacrifice, as some people go for as well, causing target party or raid member to transfer 30% of damage taken to you, the caster, last 12 seconds or until the caster has transferred 100% of their maximum health. Again, you can do this to help buff out some damage to from somebody else to you. Overall, I just find Rebuke is a really nice, easy one, and it helps that I can help with interrupts, etc. when I'm playing Holy Pally. Then we have a really cool one, Sacred Shield on the Boots. Each time the target takes damage, they gain a Sacred Shield, absorbing X amount damage and increasing the Paladin's chance to critically hit with Flash of Light by 50% for up to 6 seconds. We're going to be using tons of Flash of Light, of course. In addition, it causes your Flash of Light to heal targets with Sacred Shield for an additional 100% over 12 seconds. So it's giving them a Sacred Shield, it's improving healing we do, etc. It's absolutely phenomenal. They cannot gain the effect more than once every six seconds, and it lasts a minute. And it cannot be on more than any one target at a time. Lastly, we've got Divine Light, another really good one. Healing a friendly target for X amount, 50% of any excess healing on them, so overhealing, that is, is converted into an absorption shield that lasts 15 seconds. Multiple casts of it do not accumulate it, however, and it does benefit from all talents and effects that trigger from Holy Light as well. So it's really good for any overhealing. We can get an absorb shield on that person. Then in the ring runes, we're just going for Holy Specialization, increasing our chance to hit with Holy Spells. And then I like to go for Defense Specialization um, to increase our defense. So how are we going to put all, them, all of these things together and what spells are we mainly going to be using in our core rotation for healing? First up is Holy Light. This is a slow, single-target heal that is fairly powerful. However, because of the speed it takes to actually do anything um, with its cast time, it can sometimes overheal a lot, and therefore that is going to be wasted. Whereas something like our Divine Light on the next line down, which is obviously one of the new runes we've just spoken about, is actually another powerful heal, except rather than Holy Light... Divine Light actually will use um, or create an Absorb Shield for the overhealing done, and I prefer to use this in those situations where possible. Flash of Light is a very quick, efficient heal. We're going to be using this a lot. Boom, 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 boom. Flash of Light spam. You know how it is. Um, I absolutely love it. Really, really kind of our fill-out spell there. Holy Shock is an instant cast heal that can be quite expensive, but powerful. There is obviously that rune we spoke about where you can take it instead um, of another rune. Again, it really depends on your play style if you want to be meleeing or not. But again, it can get quite expensive. So do be careful on your mana if you are choosing to go that route. Keep Sacred Shield active on the primary damage recipient at all times because it is such a huge impact to healing. Could be the tank. It could be someone that's just taking a lot of healing. Whoever that is, keep this on them. Beacon of Light should be active on a target at all times. Again, generally the tank, somebody that's taking consistent damage that you want to keep up healing, etc. Maybe somebody else that's taking consistent damage while you're healing other people, you know, whoever it may be. Just try and work that out to be most, you know, in the most efficient way possible to make use of that beacon. And apart from that, ensure you're keeping the Sheaf of Light buff active by auto-attacking for a considerable amount of time with melee, remember. Again, if you're taking that over the Holy Shock rune, it really does depend again on your playstyle. It is quite easy to keep up that buff as long as you are melee attacking. And then, of course, make sure you're keeping up your aura, which is likely to be Devotion Aura, especially with the build I've shown where we are putting improved Devotion Aura points, adding 25% efficiency, I think it was, to it. And that is pretty much it for the core spells you will be using. If you're not sure which seal to use, generally I would go for seal of light so you can get some healing back, etc. 
or you can go for Seal of Wisdom to try and help get some mana back. But those are the main two I would generally use. Nothing much has really changed on those since the previous phase where I have done guides on that, if you would like a bit more granular detail. Um, but really, again, nothing much has really changed on those. So it's just pretty much business as usual with our Seals in this phase. If you guys do need any more help, etc., you can join the Patreon where I can help you one on one with any questions you may have. And you can also unlock a VIP channel in the Discord where we have a load of really knowledgeable members. We also have things like macro spreadsheets and video guides on there that are also there to help you. And if you're looking for other class guides, check out the playlist here where we have done all of them for this phase.